Well, as I mentioned, these next few weeks, we'll be looking at the 23rd Psalm, this well-known and beloved Psalm. We will sing it, we will hear it, and we will look at it verse by verse. So this Sunday, we'll be looking at the first three verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Gracious God, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts that are open to receive and respond to your word, your message to us this day. Amen. Well, have you ever noticed that Psalm 23, the 23rd Psalm, is read very often at funerals? or graveside internment services? Probably yes, right? The majority of those. Very often when I meet with families, and especially if they're not regular church attendees, perhaps they don't belong somewhere, if there's one scripture that they would like to be included in a funeral service or an internment, it is always the 23rd Psalm. Perhaps it is the most well-known psalm. It could be the most well-known Bible passage in all of scriptures. And it is a very important and beautiful psalm. The psalmist, presumably David, has a very basic set of wants that the shepherd provides for his sheep. These include food and drink, tranquility, rescue when lost, Freedom from the fear of evil and freedom from the fear of death. And a sense of being surrounded by the grace of the Lord and a permanent dwelling place in the house of God. So you can see why Psalm 23 is so appropriate for funeral services, celebration of life services, and graveside internment services. This psalm gives us assurance and hope that no matter what we face in life, the challenges, the difficulties, the fears, that we will be led to quiet waters and green pastures. Basically, that the Lord always leads us to Vermont. It is home. Well, throughout the scriptures, God is described as the shepherd of Israel. But also, the leaders of Israel are referred to as shepherds. Specifically, David and Moses. Now, fast forward just a bit to the New Testament. The Pharisees were also supposed to be the shepherds of Israel. But, a little hint, they did not shepherd the people very well. At least Jesus didn't think so. Now, in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Scriptures, it includes a promise of a new leader in Israel who will come forth from a very small town, from Bethlehem. The prophet Micah writes these words, And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. It's a prophecy of a future shepherd. Now throughout the scriptures, they assure us that as our good shepherd, God cares for our needs and continues to remind us that we are all like sheep. Now, over the last few weeks, I have learned some interesting facts about sheep, which I'm going to share with you all. And truly, we all are like sheep. Now, I have a dog named Billy. Some of you know Billy very well. In fact, Billy is staying in Chuck and Jereen's house um, until tomorrow. We do miss Billy, but we're glad that he's in good hands. Now, I'm able, over a few weeks, a few months when we first got Billy, I was able to train Billy to, to sit. Now, if you have dogs and if you tried, generally you can train dogs to sit, sometimes even to lie down, often with a treat, you know. Sometimes if they're, they're food sensitive, you know, 
um, they'll, they'll, they'll learn with a treat. But you can train a dog to sit. You can train a dog to lie down. You cannot do that with sheep. Not at all. No one, in fact, can make a sheep lie down. Here's what's interesting. Sheep will only lie down when they have had plenty to eat, when they have quenched their thirst, and when they are not threatened by any wild animal or any annoying, biting insects. Basically, when all of their needs are met fully and completely, only then will sheep actually lie down. We're like, kind of like sheep. We want to lie down, and we lie down when we have all of those needs met. But in life, the truth is, we feel it's really hard to lie down because we're always chasing we're worried, we're fearful. We probably don't have that sense of security that we strive for. But the Good Shepherd leads us. It's also a really interesting note here. Now, one scholar who I really love and have poured over his resources these last few weeks, his name is Kenneth Bailey. Now, he used to live in the Middle East for decades. He noticed something which I find very interesting. So he compared Egypt with, uh, with Israel, the Holy Land. He said, in Egypt, where there's no open pasture land, there's very little land, and the land that do have are fenced, so it's not open, the shepherds are seen driving their sheep from behind with sticks. It's really the only way to get the sheep to where they need to go because there's very specific places that they need to go to find any suitable land for grazing. But in Israel, and some of us have been there, it's wide open, vast wilderness. The shepherd walks slowly ahead of his sheep and plays his pipe, a shepherd's pipe called a neigh, or will sing a very unique song. It's a unique song to that shepherd. So the shepherd is not forcing or driving. The good shepherd gently leads and calls. And the sheep appear to be attracted primarily by the shepherd's voice which they know, and they're eager to follow. There's fascinating stories. And in this book, they tell really interesting stories. But there's one I'll share. It's sort of a common occurrence that you'll see, where shepherds, multiple shepherds, with, with hundreds, sometimes thousands of sheep in their flocks, will gather around a spring or a well to provide some water. And they'll be there for an hour or two hours. And then at one point... One of the shepherds needs to go, decides to go. So we'll start to walk away and we'll either sing this song or play his specific pipe. And out of thousands, I mean literally thousands of sheep, his sheep start to get away and follow one by one. This is what happens. I mean, this is what sheep do. It's absolutely fascinating because the sheep really do Know the voice of the shepherd. All the sheep have to do is hear the shepherd calling the voice or playing that very unique tune on a very specific pipe. And the shepherd leads and the sheep follow because they also know that they're following a good shepherd. Now here's something else that I learned. Sheep are afraid to drink from moving water even if it's shallow. And so what happens is shepherds will construct nooks near the edge of streams. Sheep will actually, and this has been documented, if there's a running running stream, it doesn't have to be massive, even this stream behind us. If it's running water, sheep will be moving up and down all day long until they can find some pool or some nook where the water isn't moving. Even when they're 
dying of thirst, they still will not go into moving water. But the shepherds will go out of their way to lead the sheep to a place of still water. Or if there's no place of still water, the shepherds will construct something to direct the water to where it needs to go so that the sheep can drink and be filled, quenched their thirst. The good shepherd will provide still waters, whatever the cost. Because shepherds know that the sheep need grass and water and tranquility to lie down. And about those words, to lie down, it's, they're good words. And we're going to look at multiple different translations or versions over these next three Sundays. But the Greek word, so it's translated into Greek, I think does a better job of defining the nuance and the deeper meaning. Now the word is katekineso. And it actually is translated to camp, to camp down, to lodge, to rest. Now, I don't know how many of you have camps or you go camping. And it takes some effort, right, to get everything set up. But when you have camp set up, you can rest. And I love that imagery. The Good Shepherd lets me rest does everything I need to let me rest. Instead of he makes me lie down, he doesn't make us do anything. He leads us. He creates the environment to let us find rest. And don't we all need rest? I mean, really. We're either just tired, scrambling around, activity after activity, especially if you have young children. But even if we're in a different stage of life where work demands are no longer there, there's something in our minds and something in our hearts that are, it's always moving, always stirring, always chasing, striving. And we sometimes just feel exhausted, all of us at times, and we need rest. That's what the Good Shepherd provides now, this psalm and these first few verses are also about sheep being lost and the good shepherd who finds and brings back all lost sheep. Something else very interesting about sheep. Now, this is very different than dogs and cats. You've probably heard stories or you've seen movies, especially dogs, but this is true of cats, who, like, family members have moved across country, right, and somehow forgot their animals, don't know how that happened, but, but the animals found their way back, like, and actually to a whole new home, which is fascinating. But if animals get lost, dogs or cats especially, they have a way of returning home. They, they, they know how it's the scent, it's who knows what it is, but they can find their way back. Not so for sheep. Sheep, a lost sheep, cannot find its own way home and won't even make an attempt the shepherd alone can provide the rescue that the sheep needs. Now, once a sheep knows it's lost, it tries to hide. Again, it's not trying to find its way back home. It actually will try to hide under a bush or a rock. And then the sheep begins quivering and bleeding. You know, the, the, the bleat of a sheep, right? Ba, ba, whatever that sounds like. Because it's scared, it's terrified. And here's what's interesting. The shepherd, of course, must locate it very quickly and at great risk before it's discovered. Because who else is hearing this sheep bleat? The wild animals who want nothing more than a delicious, you know, lunch or dinner. So the sheep don't know better. They're crying out. And anyone who's going to come after them is going to have them. Any enemy, any thief, any wild animal. But the shepherd, the shepherd willingly risks their own life 
for the safety of the sheep. Now, one of the songs that we often sing for our evening service, the first Sunday each month, is by contemporary worship leader Corey Asbury, and it's entitled Reckless Love. And it talks about this reckless love of God, this reckless love that a good shepherd displays, especially when the sheep are lost and alone and hurting. I'm not going to sing the song for you, but here is just kind of part of the chorus. It says, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It chases me down, fights till I'm found. It leaves the 99, and I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. It's a beautiful image of God as our good shepherd. Now, this reckless love will send the shepherd out to actually even leave the rest of the flock to go searching for just the one who has gone astray. Think about that. You might think, well, that doesn't make sense. It's irresponsible. Well, it's reckless love for the one. And aren't we all at some time in our lives perhaps the one? So on being found, this lost sheep is too traumatized to walk. And so it needs to be carried back to the flock or the village. You've probably seen imaging of a shepherd or Jesus with a sheep. I got this in the Holy Land, carved of olive wood. It's a shepherd with a sheep, hunched over his shoulders. And more than likely, this was a sheep that was lost, that needed to be found and carried back home. Because there's no place like home. As the prophet Isaiah said, all we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. So Jesus told this parable from Luke 15. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does not he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on its shoulders and goes home. And then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. That's what the good shepherd does. Always willing to search and rescue all of us. Because at times in our lives, we have all gone astray. We have all gotten off of the right paths. We know it. And that's okay, because even when we do, we're never left alone. Jesus comes for us. Now, in the wilderness, there are many paths and many trails. And one could say this is true about life in general. Now, many in the wilderness lead to dead ends, lead to places that have no green pastures, no waters at all. Many trails lead to rocky cliffs as well, where sheep are very often will literally fall off the cliff. So the good shepherd knows which paths are the right ones for us. The good shepherd will lead his sheep in the right paths, only the paths that will lead to good places, that will lead to health and wholeness and safety and security. The good shepherd leads us in right paths because of his goodness and his love and his mercy for all of us. The great hymn writer Isaac Watts set Psalm 23 to verse and in 1719 wrote these words. He brings my wandering spirit back when I forsake his ways and on his shoulder gently laid 
and home rejoicing brought me. And you see, all of these attributes that make a shepherd a good shepherd are the attributes of God, our good shepherd, and are found in the person of Christ. For Jesus himself said these words to his disciples. I am the good shepherd. See, knowing about shepherding and shepherds and flock and sheep, as Jesus did, as his disciples did, as his whole audience did, they knew about all of this. They knew what made a shepherd and a leader good and not so good. And everyone wants a good shepherd because of what the shepherd provides. So Jesus says to them and says to us today, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not actually care for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. And so there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the dream of Jesus, that we may be one. That was his prayer for his disciples, that we may be one. That we will not let anything or anyone scatter us or lead us down wrong paths. And Jesus is willing to risk all. It's that reckless love of Jesus. Jesus was willing to lay down his life for his flock, for his friends, and he did. Jesus was willing to do whatever it took, and Jesus is willing to do whatever it takes to bring us together in safety and to bring us home as one flock. Because Jesus is our good shepherd. And in Christ, we find the nourishment, the refreshment, the tranquility that we desperately need in all of our days and all of our times of trouble. In our busy and often turbulent lives, when everything around us seems chaotic and not still and not quiet, maybe we are fearful of the unknowns or the future or maybe we're unsure of which paths we are to take. Or we're tempted to go down paths that we have a feeling may not be the best for us or for others. I want you to know that Jesus is there calling to us with a note uniquely tuned to our ears and to our hearts. So friends, fellow sheep, flock, May we hear that song playing. May we hear the voice of Jesus calling our names, calling your name. And may we follow, knowing that he will gently lead us in the right paths to still waters where we can lie down and find rest and our souls can be restored for his name's sake. Amen.